any content creator, video, photographer or home server user who stores, transfers or simply seeks a fast connection will eventually consider whether upgrading to a 10 gigabit Ethernet network is beneficial for their use. Personally, I've been using a 10 GBE network at home for several years and I am still impressed by its read and write speeds. However, I will delve deeper into this later in this video. Sonnet kindly provided me with the Mic Fiverr card as a test unit and that's what this video is about. Let's start with the technical specifications which also can be found on Sonnet's website. The Sonnet Mac Fiverr PCIe card is a versatile adapter card that combines high-speed performance SSD storage, Ethernet connectivity and USB peripherals into one solution. Compatible with Mac, Windows and Linux systems, this card offers several features, including a dual M.2 NVMe SSD slot, a 10 GBE Ethernet port and two 10 GPPS USB-C ports, all on a standard full height PCIe card. With the ability to add up to 16 terabytes of SSD storage via its dual M.2 NVMe PCIe SSD slot, the MacFiber PCIe card provides fast data access and storage capacity. It supports super fast data transfers with two SSDs in RAID 0 configuration, arguing speeds up to 6600 Mbits for both reading and writing. And what's really cool, when using two NVMe cards, one of them can also be used as a boot drive as described by Sonnet on the website in a macOS environment. And the last quick information for you, in this video I'm using the Samsung 970 series NVMe SSDs with 1TB each. The question you're surely asking yourself is, what application area requires such a card? To answer this question, at least two questions come to mind. First question, what is my objective? Second question, what are my constraints? In terms of constraints, it's important to know the current state of your setup. Does your device have Thunderbolt 3 or 4? Are PCIe interfaces available? Do you need a 10 GBE? More storage space? Perhaps even a RAID solution? Or additional USB-C ports with fast transfer speed? Afterward, you need to consider what your objective is. Are you doing video editing via your home server network? Or transferring large amounts of data. How do you upgrade the Mac Fiverr with NVMe SSDs? It's not as complicated as it seems. Lay the Mac Fiverr on a flat surface, rotate it that the heat sinks are facing downwards and loosen the four screws on the back. Next, there are two more screws on the front where the NVMe SSDs will be attached later. So, loose those two screws as well, apply thermal pads, secure the NVMe SSDs and finally tighten the heat sinks with the four screws. That's it. In my opinion, there are the following scenarios. Scenario 1. If you only need a single GBE network card, then I would recommend opting for a standalone solution like the Sonnet Zolo 10G, provided you have a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port, for example, on a Mac or a notebook. However, if you are looking for a PCIe solution, a 10 GBE network card such as a Zolo 10 PCIe card could also be the right choice. Scenario 2 becomes interesting when you require a 10 GBE interface along with additional slots for NVMe hard drives. Scenario 3 is essentially Scenario 2 with the desire for additional USB-C connection options. But we will revisit this combination later on. To be honest, I couldn't think of another headline for this chapter. I simply wanted to tell you 
on which platforms I successfully tested the card. In combination with my Echo 3 desktop, I was able to operate the card successfully with all functions on my Mac Mini M1, MacBook Pro, M2 Pro and my 5K iMac from 2017. Using it on my Windows PC also went smoothly and with all features through direct integration with my motherboard. However, you will need to download and install the drivers from Zonet's website. After that, everything should work without any issues. Then I tested the card on my Unraid system. Everything is recognized under Unraid and the features can be passed through to your VMs, provided your computer supports VTDDE and IOMMU. The same goes for Proxmox. The card was also recognized with the NVMEs here and you can pass the MacFiber into the VMs. However, in Proxmox, as with other PCIe devices, you will need to configure pass-through first. So plan some time for this. Just let you know, I was able to pass through both NVMEs, the 10 GBE network adapter and the two USB-C ports without any issues both on Mac OS and Windows. However, on the Mac OS you will need to make a few configurations with OpenCore, so plan some time for this as well. This card is very cool and useful, especially for Mac Pro 5.1 or 7.1 or Hackintosh users. Some cheese grater users know what I'm talking about. The available PCIe interfaces are quickly filled and space is limited. Here the MacFiver can help save space. You should definitely check some YouTube videos out from other YouTubers how to connect the MacFiver to an open core environment. Let's talk about performance. Read and write speed. On the Windows I achieve the maximum speed as specified by Sonnet. The same applies to the usage in a virtual environment, whenever on the macOS or Windows as a VM. But there is a small limitation, however, like on a native Apple device. For example on macOS Ventura, on my Mac Mini M1 with an Echo 3 or on my iMac 5K from 2017. Let's talk about pros and cons. I'm surprised by the following. On the macOS the card runs directly plug and play, so no driver installation is necessary. The build quality of the unit is simply superb. The material of the bracket is solid, as are the heatsinks. And this brings us to the next positive aspect. The heatsink of the NVMe slots really does a great job. Anyone who has ever installed a Samsung or Samsung 970 knows how hot these parts can get. With a huge heatsink, the NVMe SSDs reaches temperatures of a maximum of 55 degrees Celsius. Without a heatsink, temperatures quickly rise up to 70 or 80 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, setting up a RAID system on the macOS system was extremely easy. Simply open this utility and let's go. The price around $299 MSRP might seem a bit high. However, if you were to buy each component separately, the total costs might not differ much. Plus, this card only needs one PCIe slot, which is great for saving space on your motherboard or in an external setup. Now, Think about this interesting scenario. What if you were to get a 10 GBE network card, a USB-C 3.2 controller and an NVMe RAID controller separately? Basically, you do need a motherboard with at least three PCIe slots and this can be complicated. Especially when it comes to getting a dedicated RAID controller, prices can be quite surprising. Feel free to check it online for yourself. In general, I'm really pleased with the Mac Fiverr. It packs high-end features at a fairly decent price point. Plus, it is built with top-notch materials, ensuring longevity in its use.
This makes it a smart investment, especially if you're someone who upgrades to a new Mac every few years. With the Mac Fiverr, you can save yourself from shelling out for pricey upgrades from Apple down the line. What seemed a bit old to me, but most likely due to the PCIe bandwidth of the Mac Mini, is the different read and write speeds of the NVMe SSDs. Both NVMe SSDs are from Samsung and identical in build, but they have different firmware versions. To obtain this information, you simply need to download Samsung or Samsung Magician and the software will provide you with the necessary details. But back to the topic. On the Windows, I achieve the speeds specified by Samsung, reaching 3500 Mbps per second. However, on the macOS, the situation is slightly different. Here, I achieve approximately 2650 Mbps per second for the first NVMe in both read and write operations. For the second NVMe, it's about 1175 Mbps per second for writing and 2590 Mbps for reading. Even in grade 0 on the macOS, I obtain these performance figures which is somewhat disappointing. Nevertheless, the Mac Fiverr is directly connected to the PCIe slot of the motherboard from my computer. And on the Mac OS, I had to use the Mac Fiverr with a Mac Mini using an Echo 3 and Thunderbolt, as there's no other way to connect the device to the Mac. In summary, I'm very pleased with this card and I am convinced that it's a really long-term investment with a really good value. What do you think? Do you have any questions? Please feel free to write them in the comments. And that's it. Thank you very much and I would appreciate if you followed my channel and gave this video a thumbs up. See you next time. Bye.